last video, what we did was we created our play game controller, um, our fruit container to shoot the fruit. So when we press play, this is what happens. You can see a bunch of different fruit are shooting from the location of our play game controller. So in this video, what we're going to do is first we will add in a sword. So when it hits the actual sword, we will slice that fruit in half. Um, we also will update our score and we will update our timer here. So we're gonna do all that in this video. We're also gonna shoot, slow this down that way. Um, it shoots at a better speed. And lastly, in the next video, we will finish this up by placing it into our Oculus headset. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing, let's go ahead and let's just make our sword. So that's why we downloaded these seven swords. And you can see, we can go ahead to any of these prefabs. And what I wanna do is kind of put my sword somewhere near this. So you can choose any one of these swords down here. And you can see I can make it bigger. If I wanted it like that, any one of these. Well, I'm gonna kinda of take the sword that kinda of looks like the sword from our Fruit Ninja Sensei. I'm gonna just drag that right here. Obviously, I want it to be at my table where I'm at and I want to rotate that. So we're going to rotate that around like that because this is where I'm currently at, right? So that should be 90. And there we go. And let's rotate it down like that. So that's me holding that sword. And now, uh, yeah, let's move it like that. All right. So Let's go ahead and just play this and let's see if it's in a good position. Yeah, it is. It's actually like right in the perfect position to cut it. And you can kind of see that if I move here and I move my camera over like this, we can kind of rotate it and see that happening. So now if I press play, you can see it's it's not really cutting it it's just reflecting it and it's bouncing off so what we want to do is actually when it hits it we want to slice that fruit in half and also update our score so let's go ahead and do that so on this sword I'm just gonna rename it sword and right, we know what it is I'm gonna go ahead and add a script called sword. Let's go ahead and make that script, create and add, and we want to open up our script. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And there we go. So to slice our fruit, what we're actually going to do is we're going to have a reference to these guys here. So each one of these have a half fruit. That's why I chose the fruit pack. It has a half apple, it has a choice for you to do a banana slice like that or like that. It has a kiwi that you can do. You slice like that or that, and it has a strawberry. So whenever something collides with our sword, we're going to get what that that object that hit our sword is. If it's an apple, we'll show an apple half, and we'll delete the apple half. If it's a banana, we'll show either one of these. We'll delete this one and create a new reference. So to do that, we need four references, one for each of these halves inside of our fruit script. So here, I'm going to make this, I'm going to say sliced variables, always a great thing to comment your code. So when you come back, you will understand what's going on. I'm going to make it public game object. This is going to say sliced apple. This is going to say public game object sliced banana. Let's say public game object, sliced, kiwi, say public, game object, sliced, strawberry, and there we go. I'll save that. Let's go ahead and drag in our references as we speak. So when I click on my sword, my sword script now has these with none. I want to drag these in. So I'm just going to drag that. Apple goes there, apple half. For banana, I want this one, so I'll just drag in that. Kiwi, I can do this half or this. I like the slices. I'm going to drag that in. 
and for my strawberry half, I'm going to drag that in. Now, we have to make sure these things, these, and there we go. So, my sword is good, has a render. What I want to do, though, is when something collides with my sword, I want to see what collided with it. In order to do that, I need to go ahead and add in a collider. And I'm just going to do a simple box collider here. And you can see, there it is. And pretty much anything that collides with that sword. Now by difference, I could have done a mesh collider. And you can see that here. And you can see it kind of convexes around that. So let's just stick that one and then you'll show you why I will see the differences. So I have that. If you take convex off, it tries to match it exactly, but here we're just going to do this. All right. So now we have this collider. An event gets triggered in our script anytime this object, which has this mesh collider, something hits it. So if I hit the table, if I hit the floor, anything I hit with the sword, an event gets triggered. That event check down here say on on collision enter there you go and let's put in our comments here now anytime anything collides with our sword something collides with our sword it is this is what collided. So what we have to do, what we're going to do, we can do it a bunch of different ways. What we're going to do is get the name of the thing that was collided with, and we'll check to see what that name is. If you look over here, those names come from this. So I could say if what I collided with was an apple or a banana or a kiwi or strawberry or a table or any of the names, but the name should match what is here. So first, let's go ahead and get that name. Names are text, so text are strings. I'm going to say string, fruit, I, hit. Fruit, I, fruit name, I, hit. That's going to be equal to collision dot game object dot name. Now, I want to show you something. Let's put her in a comment first. Get the fruit, the name of the object that collided with the sword. So, I want to show you something. Fruit name I hit. Right now, this says apple, banana, kiwi, strawberry. When I press play, I want you to see it's going to generate a bunch of copies of these. Look at this, banana clone, apple clone, kiwi clone, all of these have clone. So let's go ahead and just show you how to do this. Let's get rid of the clone so we simply will have banana as our fruit name I hit. All right? So how do we get rid of that clone part? At the end, I'm going to say replace like this. It takes two things. What do you want to replace and what do you want to replace it with? And most programming languages have this. So what I want to replace is the clone part. That is a part of all the new fruit that we are shooting. What I want to replace it with is just an empty space. So it's pretty much going to erase that. So I'm going to get the name of the object and then let's just add another comment. Replace the name containing it says clone, right? With empty. All right, good. Erase the name containing clone. There we go. So that gets us our name. Now, what we're going to do is check if the name is Apple. We'll check. The name is banana, and we will check if 
the name is kiwi and we will check if the name is strawberry. So we're going to do those checks by just checking what this value is. But when we do, we want to show our sliced fruit. And you have to think about this now. When this shoots, and I'm going to pause it, this is the whole fruit that I hit. So this would be banana. When it hits this, I want to delete this banana and I want to put in place a sliced banana exactly the same size, shape, and position as where this was. So it looks like I actually sliced that guy. Same thing here. If this kiwi right here hits this, I want to delete this kiwi object and I want to put this sliced kiwi in that same position at the same size. That's what we have to do. We could do that for each one of these or using dry principles, dry in computer science means do not repeat yourself. We can make a function that we can just do all that in the function and call that function up here depending if it's an apple, banana, kiwi, or fruit. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, show sliced fruit. And we're going to make that exactly as we called it. I'll say private void show sliced fruit. Now, in order to do that, we need two things. We need to know the fruit that we collided with. So if it's an apple, I need to know that apple because I need to know where it is so I can delete it and also put the sliced fruit at exactly that position. And I also need to know what type of fruit am I shooting? Because remember, this is just going to be a name. Is it apple, banana, kiwi, strawberry? So should I create a sliced apple or a sliced banana or this? So I need to think of two things inside of show sliced fruit. So first object, say game object, and this is be sliced fruit to show. And the second one would be game object, whole fruit to delete. With those two things, we can do what we need to do. So inside of here, first thing we will do is create sliced fruit at the whole fruit collided with position. Then what are we going to do? We're gonna... Then what are we going to do? Then we want to delete the whole fruit we collided with, right? Very simple. So up here, I'm going to say instantiate. And we've done this before, just like in our fruit. You can see we have instantiate whole fruit. So we're going to do the exact same thing since we have references these. This sliced fruit to show is going to be either apple, banana, kiwi, or this. So we're going to say that sliced fruit to show. Second thing, I want it to be in this exact position of this whole fruit. So I'm going to say whole fruit dot transform dot position. And I need one other variable. I'm actually just put these on different lines so you can see that. I want to put that there. I'll put that there. And I'll do one more. The last thing I'm going to do is I want to put it at the same rotation of the whole fruit that I just collided with. That transform dot rotation. And I'll save. So this line of code says, hey, make me whatever type of fruit that half fruit that I passed in put it at the whole fruit that I'm going to delete's position and give it the same rotation that creates our sliced fruit at the same location of wherever we hit that object down here we simply want to delete our whole fruit so I'm going to say destroy very simple whole fruit and there we go so this is all we need to do to actually show our sliced fruit inside of our sword 
Now up here, we're going to call this procedure four times. The only thing that's going to be different is what is the slice fruit that we're going to pass in. So how do we do that? Let's check. If, what are we checking? We're checking this, the fruit name that I hit. Remember, because if I collide it with a banana, it's going to say this banana object's name, clone, we're going to replace, and it'll just, this will be banana. Collide it with a strawberry, this will be strawberry. So for this, I'm going to say, fruit name I hit, and we can just, in case in the future, we change it, I'll just say contains, so you can get used to that, and we want it to match exactly what we typed here, so I'm going to say apple. If it did, what do we want to do? What we want to do is call our show slice fruit. So I'm going to say show slice fruit, remember I have to give it two arguments, well what is the sliced fruit that I want to show? That is my sliced apple. So here I'm going to say sliced apple. And then I'm going to say, what is the fruit now that I want to delete? Hmm, how do we get that? Well, remember collision is what I collided with. So I'm going to say object. And that's what we're going to do if it's an apple. If, if what the name I hit contains apple. I'm going to slice it. I'm going to pass in sliced apple. I'm going to delete this guy. We're going to do the exact same thing down here. So say if fruit name I hit contains. And I'll say banana. Do the same thing. Show sliced fruit. Now the fruit I want to pass in is my sliced banana. I'm going to say same thing, object. That's what I want to delete. Do that two more times, and we are done with our sliced fruit. We'll check it out. Last thing we've got to add is simply our score every time we hit the object. And then the other thing we have to do is our slow down our fruit. And we'll be done with this video. Really quick, easy, fast. Let's go ahead and finish up these sliced fruit and then test it. So we got if, same deal, fruit name, I hit. Now this one, we did two contains, let's do two equals. Let's do equals equals. And this one is kiwi. So the difference between contains and equals, if I had, for example, banana two, I would actually wouldn't need to get rid of clone. As long as bananas inside of it, it would actually do that. And I'm, again, I'm just showing you this to show you the different types of things you can use in C Sharp. A lot of these you'll see in other languages, like this looks very similar in Swift or Java. Um, same thing here, contains, looks very similar in Swift for building Apple apps. I'm trying to teach you some of the things that you can see in a bunch of different programming languages. Equals equals just means the only way I'm going to call slice fruit is if the name is exactly kiwi. So if I did not have this clone here, and it says fruit name is equal to kiwi, and the name was actually kiwi clone, it would not show my sliced fruit. So just showing you a couple different ways to kind of do this. But same thing applies down here. Show sliced fruit. And what we're going to pass in here is going to be sliced kiwi. I'm going to say collision dot game object, right? Down here, if fruit name I hit equals equals, this is strawberry. That means it has to be strawberry or else it would not do it. Say fruit name sliced strawberry now. I want to do, and I'm going to say collision dot game object. So with that, let's go ahead and save it. And let's see what happens inside of our game. So I'm going to unpause. Now we have an error, and this is another way to, I didn't do something, and it won't allow me to play. It's going to say, hey, got to fix some errors first. The errors you can see inside your console here, and you can also see it down here. So you got to learn how to debug. Part of computer science is making errors. No one is a perfect programmer and figuring out what the compiler or what the program is trying to tell you how to fix it. It gives you hints. So for example, this says assets sword.cs. So inside of my sword script at line 46 space 68, 
Yeah, it has the line and the space. It says error 6102. It expected a semicolon. So let's look at that, right? Let's go to swords, right? What did it say? It said 46 space 68. Computer's very good. So 46 here. And if I counted this, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the spaces. And you can see it right here. This is how accurate that is. At this location, you can see the error. It expected a semicolon. So now let's resave that. You come back over here, and you can see the errors went away. So in every programming language, the compilers try to help you understand what that error is. This one tells you the exact space, the exact file, and the exact line number. All right, so now let's test. So now let's test it. When it hits, uh, those fruit are slicing. Now, there, I can notice another error. The fruit is falling through my table. It should be falling onto my table. And that's because my table that I created, I never gave it a collider. Let's pause this. And there's another thing you can see. The fruit, when it's actually colliding with the object, it's there, but it's not dropping. Well, the kiwi drops, but the banana isn't. So if I unpause it, you can see the bananas are staying right there. Kiwis are dropping, but the bananas are. We've got two errors that we've got to fix. The banana's not dropping because the banana probably does not have gravity applied to it. So let's just look at these. If I double click on kiwi, kiwi's dropping because kiwi has rigid body, which is using gravity. I go to the banana, banana does not have that rigid body. So now if I type in rigid body, there we go, that gives it gravity. So if it got hit, if it hits the sword in the sky, it's going to drop because gravity is going to pull that force. So again, look at this one. We have our rigid body. And you can see here. The other thing I want to give my banana so it, it is missing is it doesn't have a box collider. And that's probably because, see, originally I was going to use this one, but I just changed it in this video and I did this one. But it's a good lesson to learn, like, the bananas were not dropping or not colliding with other fruits it's because, again, I did not update these. This is the one that I was originally going to use. But I decided to use this one. All right, so let's go back here and add in just our kind of box collider there. And then now let's go back and our banana should fall. And then we can fix our table issue. So you can see these bananas are flying, right? And let's look. See, there's my sliced strawberry, right? Look at that banana flying. Here's one right here. Now it's flying. So I sliced it. It's flying. Right? So everything. Here's some kiwi. Have any sliced apples at the time? Look, these bananas are flying everywhere. And let's see if we can get an apple. Oh. I just saw one fly by me. See? There you go. So our slicer is working. But again, when I unpause this, it's not falling on the table. So, they're falling through the table. All right, so let's fix that. So this table is this location right here. It's one of the assets I use from the Japanese Zen Garden. What I want to do is go ahead and add a collider. By adding a collider, if something hits it, it will either stop or bounce, right, like in real life. So now let's go ahead and try this, and our fruit slice should stack up right here nicely. So you can see, they're they're going so fast that they're just bouncing off, but they're actually stopping here until they slide over. There we go. I mean, I'm, these things are flying because this is... So let's actually raise this up a little bit. 
so it doesn't hit all of them. And let's probably play again. So you can see some are getting cut, and now it's stacking up on my table nicely. 